I'm allowed outside again and today I want to bring you a quick video about Thorny Island. Thorny Island also happens to be in the heart of Westminster. What's up with that? You think that London was built on a river. Actually, it was built on several rivers. Well, London was built on the Thames, but the Thames is a massive river. It's actually the second longest river in the country. And so it's made up of lots of little tributary rivers, several of which are in London. There are, web there are websites, entire sections of libraries devoted to the lost rivers of London, the Walbrook, the Westbourne, the Fleet. But one of the most interesting and the one that explains the island of Westminster is the Tyburn. The now the Tyburn is very much the Victoria Beckham of rivers. It arises in Hampstead, weaves its way through Primrose Hill, down to Bond Street, through Mayfair, underneath Buckingham Palace, before the metaphor kind of runs out of steam and it goes through Westminster and dumps out into the Thames. As usual, if you spend slightly too long looking at a map of London, she starts to give up her secrets. Look, if you see... Oh, look, Nando's. Um, if you look here, you can see in the modern street pattern where the neatly laid out roads have had to sort of wiggle around an ancient waterway that sort of no longer exists. They say that Oxford Street dips where it traverses the valley of the Tyburn. They say it runs through the basement of Bond Street retailer Grey's Antiques. It's closed due to COVID right now, but even if I could get in and check it, then that is definitely just a random, unrelated spring because the Tyburn is literally just a sewer. They say you can see the course of the Tyburn as it made its way through Green Park, and you actually can. Oh my God, you actually can see the dip. But like the early career success of Victoria Beckham, uh, nothing stays the same forever and the Tyburn was too good an opportunity for London engineers to pass up when the population needed more access to fresh water. Completed in 1245 they built the Great Conduit, essentially a big pipe made of tree trunks and clay that tapped the Tyburn at Oxford Street and carried its Hampstead nectar all the way down to Cheapside in the city of London. And after the miles of pipe, it ended up here in a big fancy tap that had guards and bylaws and all sorts of things associated with it. But now it's just a sort of fancy manhole cover. The street that it ended on is called Poultry. It's just Poultry. <laughs> it's, it's genuinely named after chickens. These sell chickens here. I love this city. It's just, just Poultry. The Great Conduit, like everything else in this city got burned down in the Great Fire of London and the Tyburn, like all the other rivers that flowed under this city, eventually gets incorporated into the emerging sewer system. The Tyburn name became synonymous not so much with the waterway but with the site of executions which happened near it here at Marble Arch. But then we stopped killing people at Tyburn and London with the ferocious hunger seen more recently when McDonald's started to reopen up post lockdown across the country just swallowed the river up and Tyburn Road became Oxford Street and we just sort of forgot the river ever existed. Okay, but the river used to split in Westminster and spill out into the Thames in different spots. You can see one of them just next to Vauxhall Bridge. Look, there, uh, where is it? There it is. There be the Tyburn. And these created a small island in the river. I believe that's called an eight. An eight. An eight. Which brings us to Thorny Island, probably named because of its natural original covering of thorny vegetation. The edge of it started here on Great College Street and probably went as far north as Downing Street. Which, unless you've always wanted to see the edge of a world landmark from a few hundred metres away through Margaret Thatcher's fence whilst machine guns are pointed at you, then Downing Street is probably not the tourist attraction that you're looking for. King Edgar, seen here having the absolute rave of his life, chose Thorny Island to be the site of an abbey. But it was Edward the Confessor, seen here holding the one ring to rule them all, who had it rebuilt into a grand church in the 11th century, as London, which was still a few miles away at that time, was becoming the largest and most fashionable city in England. 
Edward also builds a royal residence here, so this becomes a very important little island. The church that he'd built becomes known as the Westminster, you know, like the York Minster or whatever, and now we know it better as Westminster Abbey. The palace becomes the Palace of Westminster, the principal residence for the monarchy in England for quite a while, and after they abandon it, the mother of all parliaments. <laughs> I wanted to throw some clips in here, by the way, of MPs in the House of Commons being a bit daft, but it turns out it's literally a crime to use footage from Parliament to make fun of Parliament. I mean, who came up with that lot, I wonder? Did somebody say conflict of interest? But before any of that, there's a persistent rumour that King Canute built a royal residence here. You know, King Canute, the 11th century Danish invader. King Canute, who built a whole canal through Southwark to get his ships past London Bridge. King Canute who commanded the tide to not come in and then it came in anyway. You know, King Canute. There's a not particularly well supported rumour that the whole commanding the tide episode occurred at his royal residence on Thorny Island, that he was commanding the tidal Thames to not rise up. What probably is true is that King Canute was not some pompous royal fool but was probably trying to make a very sensible point about a king's power being meaningless and insignificant in the grand scheme of things. The Thorny Island bit is probably not true, but it would be sort of poetic if the centre of British politics is all based on the exact spot where a king showed us that political power is ultimately an imaginary concept. Through Edward the Confessor's interventions, the city of Westminster gets established as the seat of royalty and of law, and in tandem with the fashionable city of London, they both explode and take over this part of the country, and this wretched hell city takes the shape that it has today. And so it was that this little island in the river rapidly becomes, for a while anyway, the most powerful piece of real estate on earth. So spots like this, which started off as islands covered in thorny vegetation and rivulets, become farms and fields supporting an early church. Then they're an urban sprawl next to a palace, and now finally it's a garden next to the MI5 headquarters. Yeah, I'm watching you. Who will spy on the spies? That'll be me. But anyway, you can see what happened. The streets and buildings got built up, the rivers got covered over, the Thames got embanked, and uh, now the only reminder that Thorny Island ever existed is the name of the street that runs around the back of Spook headquarters. Who knows what will be here in another hundred years, what this will all look like, what Victoria Beckham's legacy will even be. For now though, I, sh I should probably go. I spent a lot of time pointing a camera at a very secure building. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel, you please leave a comment. Uh, you can tip me as well, the link is, is below and I shall see you some other time. Oh, and suddenly the weather is a lot better in Westminster. It's it's almost like this is an entirely different day.